uh, I've been here uh, since 1985, and I, I think when I came here, there were only maybe one or two women in the entire United States Senate. Uh, I think I think women have added a a a a, a much broader dimension to the Senate. And look, if we're going to have a Senate that represents the country, are you going to exclude 50 percent of the country and not have any women? So I, I think the women who have come in that, uh, on both sides of the aisle, Republican and Democrat, have been great. Uh, they've added a new dimension in terms of the economy and how we look at the economy. We tend to think of jobs as men. But as we know, for example, in Iowa, we have the highest proportion of, of mothers who work than any state in the nation. So jobs is a women's issue. And the women in the Senate bring that dimension into to make us look at that side of the equation. Um, call it sensitizing us, if you, if you will, but I think they've sensitized us more uh, on the legislation we passed and how it affects people. It was Barbara Mikulski who in 1991 started asking questions about why don't we have hearings as to how many women are involved in these studies. And it was shocking. They were doing it all on men but not women. Because of Barbara Mikulski and other women in the Senate, we got NIH to change its policies so that when they do research, it's not just men, it's men. I never had a member of Congress who was a woman from Iowa. And I, that should end. Uh, that really should end. That's one distinction I don't like sharing with Mississippi. <laughs> Mississippi and Iowa, the only two states that have never had a woman member of Congress. I, I'd like to break that mold. It's, it's, it's time we have a a woman member of Congress from, from the state of Iowa.